So, I mean, we, we look at the demographics, and we know we have young people trading, but we also look at the demographics and know it is the baby boomers who trade more. But that's also about wealth, because the baby boomers have wealth, and in theory, one day that wealth will be inherited by the younger generation. So we need to start that relationship. Burza Malaysia Berhad is reinventing itself in a bid to make sure that the 60-year-old boss will continue to pull in retail investors 60 years on. Business Times sat down with Burza Malaysia CEO Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift to talk about how it is increasing its offerings and building relationships with investors. We look to the future. So our theme is future-proofing, because we're one of the pillars of the economy. So before something becomes a problem, so I, I'm happy to see the portion of retail traders increasing. So we've gone from some, you know, a, a generalized, let's just pick numbers. So we've gone from, say, 25%, we're doing 30s at the moment. So that, that's healthy. So trading volumes are up. The portion of trading that is retail has also increased. but let us act before it becomes a problem and let us continue to support mm -hmm. and let's take that opportunity. Now as a multi-asset exchange why are we embarking on these different products? Well Bursa Carbon Exchange is designed to support the greening of the Malaysian economy mm -hmm. so that if you, if you like that is supporting a supporting role. So in itself, we're elevating the conversation regarding ESG around carbon reporting, uh, which is then supported by, if you like, CSI. Mm -hmm. Now, what we also then looked at is we don't have a relationship with the investor directly. And we began engaging and we did focus groups. Mm -hmm. So would you invest in Bursa? Mm -hmm. And what we know is our retail investor base are baby boomers who are not getting younger. And we want to continue and have more retail investors joining us. And of course, retail investors' behavior has changed. They like crypto. They like fractional products. So this is a different way of buying. And so we need to, if you like, create a relationship to actually bring this new group of investors on a journey which one hopes is equities at the end of it. And, and what, we, what we also, in the context of it, is fixed deposits are growing. So fixed deposits, nothing wrong, they're in the banking system. Uh, but we would like to see that redeployed, if you like, to the exchange. Because if it's redeployed to the exchange, it's, it's helping companies do what they do, which is employ people, make profits, pay tax. And so to establish a relationship, what we saw as we engaged is there was an affinity to gold and an intermediate product is VR Capital. Um, and then, if you think of it again, then over here will be equity. So, we, the, these in themselves will be businesses that will be profitable. Mm -hmm. But that's their primary reason is to actually build a new investor base. Mm -hmm. Two point one billion at the end of last year. That's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see things quite nicely poised. Now, as we look at the IPO pipeline, I think there's a good, a diverse range of companies, big and small, coming to market. Of course, um, we have the first business trust listing shortly. And I think, again, that's an exciting development. And we, we take that step by step. Happy to see we've got I, you know, people that provide IVF services coming on board. Things we've not seen before are coming to market. Now, they have been on leap, but they're coming to the ACE market, and we're beginning to fill niches. Of course, we have E&E, &E, um, you know, that growth, the growth piece. We have interesting businesses coming on board. With, we're also seeing the advent around cybersecurity, different interesting companies. So there's always a conversation that uh, the Malaysian boss is, if you like, old sector. Uh, or I would prefer to use the term traditional. Now, as the economy evolves, we anticipate seeing offerings that are part of the new economy. And 
I think that that's good and healthy. So I think I think that piece gets back to, of course, my bursa, bursa reach. So bursa reach is about making it easier for young remisers to become known to have viable businesses. Uh, my bursa is about all investors, but specifically focused on providing solutions to new investors. Um, when we talk about younger investors, they like uh, fractional transactions. So we'll be running a sandbox on fractional trading. Oh, no, so, so what we have is, um, what was announced was we will have it. So that, that's around board lots. So the board lot reductions on train, we're talking, so if you like, the exchange is changing its back room. Uh, brokers will have to change and then there'll be an offering. So of course we have some shares that are very, very, I mean, it only works for expensive shares. Mm -hmm. So it's not every board lot will be reduced. Yeah. But if you like, uh, so that piece of work is ongoing and will be launched this year. So that's fine. But we, we want to go one more level. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, uh, we, we would like to bring, if you like, that uh, using shares, that, that idea that I could buy 10 ringgit of this and 50 ringgit of this and have my account mm -hmm. and take money from, you know, I could, I could take money from my touch and go wallet, buy shares with it, then liquidate those shares and then put it back into my touch and go wallet. That kind of, if you like, that flexibility mm -hmm. within the existing rule space. Mm -hmm. huh? So if you like, we take a, um, so it's about making sure people are empowered to, trade as they wish to trade. Mm. Now in the old days when trading was expensive, this would not be possible, but now with the advent of prepaid trading accounts, very low brokerage, etc., this becomes more real. Mm. No, it's attainable. Mm. Not more real, it is attainable in a cost competitive manner. So what we're now doing is we're looking at what framework would need to be put in place. One is technology, the other is how would it work? Mm -hmm. We look at Evergrande. So now, I mean, yes. taking a different market. Um, fraud is fraud. The obligations are on the directors of the company to, to do what they need to do, and the auditors have a role, and you have a whole ecosystem. Now, from our perspective, we ensure that information is given to investors to make informed decisions, and ask and query and guide to ensure that necessary transparency is taking place. When the necessary is not given, there are, if you like, because the exchange is based around rules. So we don't, we don't have the weight of law with us, but we have rules. And then we will follow through with the rules that have been breached and, as you would have seen, um, have, have fine directors accordingly and so on. I'm not talking specific about the matter that you asked. Um, but in the same regard, the, the key piece then becomes, it, it is, we also work very closely with the Securities Commission and you know, refer matters to the Securities Commission who then follows up, which would be more, if you like, the legislative criminal side of things. Well, the exchange's role is to ensure that transparency of market operations. And when we don't see the market operating as it should, mm -hmm. um, we will query it and if necessary, refer it for further action. So what, the, kind, the team that handles that part, have you had to beef that up or, I mean, could you give us an idea of how that works? I think, the investor okay. protection part? Well, two elements of investor protection. One is knowledge. Yes. So it's a pound of prevention, an ounce of prevention versus a pound of cure, mm -hmm. which there's a truism, but it's actually real. So when we look at the market, um, we want to make sure that investors make uh, informed decisions mm -hmm. and so the key piece is making sure information is available and, and it is to uh, investors fingertips and to 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 which we are also reassessing and re-looking at and there's a uh, looking at what is the nature of disclosure to take place to actually equip investors to make better decisions